Now it's time for Ki Sung Lim. Ki Sung Lim come from Korea, but actually he's from the Institute Instituto, sorry, Instituto Tecnológico de Costa Rica in Costa Rica. And yes. he's going to present us uh, the work title Resource Optimization of the Eulerian Video Magnification Algorithm Toward an Embedded Architecture. Key, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes. Okay, so let's start. So, hi everyone, my name is Kisun Lim. I'm a student of the Instituto Tecnológico de Costa Rica, and I'm going to present you the paper with the title Resource Optimization of the Olarian Video Magnification Algorithm Towards an Embedded Architecture. Starting with the presentation, let's take a look with the presentation's agenda. First, we're going to have a brief introduction. Uh, next, we're going to explain a little bit about the Olarian Video Magnification Algorithm. Later, we're going to talk about some related previous works with our uh, project. Um, next, we're going to have the method that we apply to obtain our results. Then we're going to show our results and analyze them. And finally, we have our conclusions. Starting with the presentation, uh, the motivation of our project is that um, there is uh, abundance in mobile devices that have um, uh, digital cameras that can capture video. So in the ability of cameras in mobile devices, uh, we can apply the Olarian video magnification algorithm or use this um, photographic resource, resources to capture unperceivable information, such as uh, bubble signs. The Olarian video magnification algorithm, sorry, uh, was uh, published in a project that was developed by the MIT's Computer Science and Intelligence, Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in 2012 and it shows that we can extract uh, information uh, by magnifying little changes in the video or color changes or movement uh, presented in the video and translate this information to uh, things like parallel signs. So using this uh, algorithm, we can uh, monitor in a contactless way or with real contact, with a contact, uh, a person's uh, parallel signs using just uh, the input of a camera. Uh, this is also important uh, because also we can use this algorithm in an application through our phones to, to monitor bioscience if we don't have any other method of monitoring bioscience. Um, there we the explaining the Olarian video magnification algorithm. We have the next diagram and we show the different components of the algorithm. Uh, as we see, we can see that the algorithm divides in three modules, the input module, the processing module, and the output module. For obvious reasons, the most important module of the algorithm is the process module. Uh, for the input module and the output module, we, we, do, we do the, the, the codification and the codification of the input and output video. So in the processing module that is divided into the first uh, special filter, as we showed the basic data flow of the algorithm, uh, the video structure that is contained in a vector of images is passed through a special filter that if for each frame of the video, uh, it divides in different spatial frequencies using pyramids. And then each frame of the video is passed to a temporal filter where we, where we selected the desired frequencies to, to be amplified. And then uh, in the component for band amplification, we amplify these frequencies selected. And for the final uh, component, we collapse the original video with the amplified frequencies to form a new video that is then write to a new video file, which is a, a magnification magnif uh, with, uh, with the magnification applied. For the for the methods applied to the of the other magnification algorithm, we have two for motion magnification and one for color magnification. With the motion magnification using the base uh, structure that we presented, we have the, the for motion magnification we use uh, for the spatial filtering a Laplacian pyramid that we use for edge detection. And then we use, for temporal filtering we use for the, for the press method we use a both of our type of the open pass. And then 
for the second type, we for, for, for the second temporal filtering, we use the ideal one pass. For the color magnification method, that is only one method, we use for the spatial filtering a Gaussian pyramid. And then for the temporal filtering, we use LDL band pass. For the structure of vital signs, we use in for the motion magnification method the bubble word band pass. But for the color magnification, the idea band pass is sufficient. So talking about some related previous work, uh, some alternatives for our solution for non-invasive monitoring techniques, we have first uh, a capturing device that uses the radar waves of frequency using an emitter and a receiver and putting the persons to be monitored between those uh, those devices. So they can extract the respiratory frequencies capturing the disturbance that the, that the respiration produced to the waves. Uh, comparing to the solution, this, uh, this project uh, uses uh, more um, more devices to capture the vital signs, so it could clear up the, the cost of the solution. Next, a uh, similar um, alternative is the use of existing devices that use Wi-Fi to, to, to measure the vital signs. Uh, using the radio frequencies of Wi-Fi device and putting the person between the access point and a uh, Wi-Fi receiving device, we can uh, the solution or the proposed solution uh, uh, can measure the vital signs such as the respiratory frequency and the heart rate. But uh, most of the tests that we uh, that we saw in, in this work is is of um, of still patients or. Uh, or a sleeping patient. So we assume that the solution is only applicable if the the person that is monitored is not moving frequently. Also, now we explaining the method to reach to our solution. First, we did an analysis aligning the algorithm or the or the main components of the algorithm, and then we execute, executed some tests with the uh, source code of the project that we were based on. Uh, this uh, the language where the language or where the base code or the source code was based is in MATLAB, and then uh, uh, we for for the preparation of the algorithm to an um, embedded system, we use uh, we translated the conversion or we converted the code to to a high level language to a low level language. In this case, MATLAB to C plus plus. We consider also the use of, of the language C because of it's commonly used in embedded architectures. But uh, the problems that we have with the language is that the lack of support of computer vision libraries or complete computer vision libraries uh, compared to the language C++. Also, in this phase, we explored possible optimizations that we could use for, uh, for, for the use of the resources that are present and now in embedded systems, and then we realized the optimization using trailer parallelization with OpenMP in the processing module where uh, uh, loops, processing loops are applied. And then we use the image processing modules, optimize image processing mod methods with OpenCV uh, using the use in the language C++. Talking about the results analysis that we obtained, the qualitative results of the motion magnification, we see that uh, uh, using the data that the base project uh, that we use uh, have, uh, we can see that the motion of the baby uh, that is sleeping and well, it is this subtle uh, motion that he is making to breathe is magnified so we can see it more clearly. Also with the circulation of the, the blood through the face of this person, we can see that uh, it changes the color, so it, it can be translated to heart rate monitoring. Now, with the execution times that we captured, we can see that the our the initial implementation that was presented in MATLAB uh, has more execution time than what we achieved with in, in C++ or our final implementation. So the analysis of the results um, before of that we see that also using a basic memorization tool in Windows, uh, we see that the uh, base implementation of the first implementation compared to the final implementation uh, has an average or on average more consumption of memory uh, in the system. 
analyzing the results, we see that the both execution times and memory consumption were improved in the system, in the system study. Also, on average, we'll claim that 430% uh, in, in execution times were improved, also reaching a top of, in the best case scenario, a 746%. Uh, also, the, the, the solution on average, uh, having a basic idea of the consumption of the programs, has 200 megabytes less consumption of memory. Uh, reaching our cons conclusions or project, we have that we fulfill the optimization of the other magnification algorithm in the system of study that we used. Also, towards the preparation of uh, of the implementation of the algorithm in embedded system. Also, that we we improve the compatibility of, with embedded platforms because of the reduce of memory usage and then the use of a low level language. As a third conclusion, we have that there is a need to evaluate a various data structure for alternative improvement of the algorithm for two dimensional vectors that were used to the, uh, to in heavily in the processing of the, of the algorithm. So um, uh, finishing to the presentation, thank you for attention. And if there is any question, uh, go ahead. You are free to ask. Thank you very much, Lim. Your virtual applause for you too. We have time for questions. Thank you. Nice presentation. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. I, I had an idea about this this algorithm. I, I never uh, pay attention to, to it. And the results are really astonishing uh you then there are some uh, if you're interested uh people in the audience there are some videos from from the results of this algorithm um are, they are available in, in youtube in the in the paper there are two links about these these results uh, yes. questions we have questions we have time for questions yeah you can ask me even in spanish i can't speak spanish so uh, <laughs> you learn Spanish. Yeah. I assume you learn to ask for a coffee in Spanish in Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have like twenty years, twenty one years of of learning Spanish. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So, okay. Uh, if you want a question in Spanish, let's switch to Spanish. <laughs> um, Una, una, una duda que me queda de, del trabajo que ustedes hicieron, como lo presentan, ¿ustedes tienen acceso al código inicial en MATLAB? Sí, correcto. Eh, y ustedes hacen una implementación, dicen que se, se basa en OpenCV, en OpenMP, eh, no me queda claro el nivel de profundidad de, de recodificación del, del código que ustedes implementaron. Eh, desde MATLAB es posible compilar ciertas cosas, depende de la plataforma. Eh, ¿A qué nivel de profundidad llegaron en la reimplementación? Y si hay mucha, si ustedes implementaron cosas nuevas, ¿eso cambia la, los resultados numéricos contra el, el algoritmo original? Eh, lo que tratamos de hacer para la solución fue minimizar los cambios o los resultados numéricos que se obtenían con la visualización de, los, de la extracción de señales vitales. Entonces, el, aunque existen herramientas en MATLAB para la conversión automática de código de de MATLAB fuente a, a otros idiomas como C++, este, nosotros lo que hicimos eh, fue una implementación casi exacta, pero con algunos cambios que no afectaran los resultados eh, cualitativos del, del algoritmo, eh, para así prepararlo para un ambiente empotrado, por así decirlo, en donde lo que buscamos mayormente era como una preparación y un estudio de caso para ver el, cómo el algoritmo podría utilizarse para una preparación a futuro eh, en un ambiente de embebido o empotrado. Ok, y, y, y desde el punto de vista de, de en qué hardware de escasos recursos, llamémosle, ¿eso sí. tiene algún, algún, men, algún eh, hardware en mente? ¿Eso podría llevar a, a traer restricciones extra en el, en el algoritmo, por ejemplo, el frame rate o el tamaño de las imágenes? Sí, eh, eh, esto ya, esos trabajos ya se están realizando eh, ahora y, y uno de los estudios que se hizo fue en, en el caso de tal vez un dispositivo móvil desarrollar una app para este algoritmo y el otro caso fue ya para un 
empotrado de alto rendimiento. En este caso seleccionamos lo que es una tarjeta Jetson Nano de la compañía NVIDIA y vimos que para los dos casos hay restricciones de, de la... Bueno, cuando quisimos, quisimos hacer la optimización tal vez eh, para que el código se ejecutara de la manera más óptima dentro del hardware que estamos utilizando, vimos que algunas de las limitaciones, pues ya es un trabajo futuro fuera de este eh, paper, es que vimos que hay una limitación en la memoria, de que si empezamos a optimizar y utilizar más, más recursos, ya sea hasta recursos de procesadores diferentes a la, a la, al procesador de la CPU, como la GPU o procesadores especializados, eh, hay un límite de memoria porque pa al parecer en los dispositivos de escasos recursos la memoria se comparte. Entonces vimos que al paralizar más usamos más memoria y llega a un punto donde no podemos hacer más procesos. Entonces sí hay como ese límite de, puede ser que el tamaño de las imágenes si son muy grandes y empezamos a usar este algoritmo, eh, se consume más la memoria. Y con los datos que teníamos, eh, si llegamos a ese punto de que entre más eh, paralizamos el algoritmo, más optimizamos, estamos llegando a ese límite de de las casas de memoria que se tenían en el dispositivo. Ok. Interesante problema. Ingenieril, mezclando la algoritmia con los recursos. Sí. ¿Alguna otra? ¿Any other question from the audience? No more questions. So... This is the end of this session. Thank you very much for all the speakers. Really nice works. We were we were uh, at the beginning from the basic and fundamental stuff in signal processing with with Raimundo, and then we we saw three applications of different kind of signal. Really really nice session. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.